Hi, my name is Rahul Pal and I head the fixed income at Mahindra Mutual Fund. A very happy new year to all our viewers. Today, uh, I'm going to talk a bit about what happened the last year and what is our opinion on the fixed income outlook. So a small glimpse into the past, one year in terms of market movement of rates. The benchmark 10 year moved down around by 80 basis points and the corporate bond, the AAA 5 year corporate bond moved down around by 130 basis points. In terms of the investors uh, returns uh, measured by the indices, the Crystal Dynamic Guild Index delivered a return of close to 10%, a 10.3 in precise and uh, Crystal Long Term AAA Bond Index would have delivered a return of close to 13.5%. So this was clearly a year of credits in terms of sharp contraction in spreads of AAA versus the gills, as in the gills, AAA rallied much more than the gills. Uh, some other indices, uh, one is the Crystal Low Duration Index would have delivered a return of close, point, close to 8.60 and the Crystal Liquid Index would have delivered a return of close to 6.5. The sharp difference is because of a adequate uh, liquidity into the system and uh, short term rents dramatically decreasing in the year uh, past gone by. One of the other things that we witnessed during the year because of the surplus liquidity was a sharp steepening of the yield curve and what do we mean very specifically is the fall in one year rates were much much greater than the fall in five year rates. So measured in terms of movements, when we started off the year, uh, the, guilt, the steepness of the yield curve that is the guilt five year minus the guilt one year was close to 30 basis points. Today we are steering at 120 odd basis points between the guilt five year and the guilt one year. So that's something which usually does not happen uh, when we see when we measure these uh, differences through the past five years. So that has been very starkly different in the last calendar year. Now I'm going to talk about a bit more about the events of the last one year. The cumulative repo rate cut by the Monetary Policy Committee, the MPC as it's more commonly known was close to 135 basis points. But that did not reflect adequately in the fall in the banking lending rates. I mean, the fall in the banking rate lending rates was close to 40 basis points, which was also unusual considering whenever in the past such action of the Reserve Bank of India has prompted a, a much more deeper rate cuts by the banking system. But this time around, that was not the outcome and that actually worried uh, people in the, in the banking and the economic circles. The other unusual uh, fact during the last one year was a, a rate cut by the Reserve Bank of India to the extent of 35 basis points. A single rate cut, I mean usually the rate cuts are in the, in the you know, they move in the basis of 25 basis point or 25 or a 50 basis point. And that was, a, this was a, uh, this was a, this was a unique measure in terms of there was one rate cut of 35 basis point. It usually doesn't happen globally also and in the Indian context in the last 20 years, never ever. So that was something very different this year. The third interesting observation that uh, we looked at at the last year was RBI, while maintaining its accommodative interest rate, actually talked about something like doing whatever it takes to achieve growth. The shift from an inflation policy to a growth oriented was something very unique, not attempted by the Reserve Bank in the last five years. So that was also something very new that we witnessed. And lastly, as we drew close to the year, and since because there was a very sharp steepness of the curve, that is the five year and the one year were at 120 basis points, unusual by the past occurrences, Reserve Bank of India did what the US did in somewhere in 2012, the Operation Twist as we commonly know. That is the Reserve Bank of India buys the long end of the bond, trying to pull down the yields of the long end of the bond and sell the short end of the bond to, just to move the inch rates up so that the, the steepness that was witnessed did not continue. The whole idea is when the long term rates go down, so that would get transmitted into the real rates. That is the banking system would also be able to transmit these uh, rates, which was, which was getting hindered by the sharp steepness of the curve. I'm going to talk a bit more about what next. I've always believed crystal grazing is a very difficult task. And uh, what I try to estimate is probabilities of achieving based on some past events. That's our whole focus as to how to give a, some sense of what the future can be. So 
I had initially talked about guilt returns giving some 10% plus guilt index and a corporate bond giving a 13% plus return. Something curious also happened this year. Crude prices, petrol as we know, I mean crude prices actually moved up by 22%. Now if somebody had told you the fact that crude would be moving up by 22% during the calendar year, you would have actually expected a negative return from the gilts. It defies conventional wisdom that a crude going up by 22% and gilt rates going down. And what is more interesting is, we had actually such deviation in the last year also. I mean, I'm talking about 2018 calendar year, where crude actually went down, whereas the gilt rates also moved up. So, there is a bit of a unconventional market movements, views from the conventional matrices, of what we had witnessed in the past. The reason that I talk about crude prices because of the events that have happened recently in the US-Iran crisis, and that has recently had some screwed spikes. Uh, so the current narrative and the dominant narrative is to look through all markets through the measure of crude as a benchmark. But strangely enough, the markets have behaved very differently to the movements of crude in the past. So we'd like to take this discussion away from crudes because that's something that's little you know, in our control and we move to a, our estimating the future based on certain past occurrences. So I will be talking a bit more about the guilds or the uh, Government of India bonds. Uh, there's, a, there's a bit of a challenge in the Government of India bonds in terms of you know, the borrowing, the fiscal looks weak because of the taxes. The taxes aren't coming in as per the budgeted numbers and we may see the government borrowing up a bit more than expected. But that's already in the news. Uh, so how do we go on from here on? What we are looking at is something what we call the difference between two market movements. Uh, let's say suppose the Crystal 10-year benchmark yield and the Crystal Liquid Index. At this point of time, the difference, the annual difference between the GILT and the Liquid Fund is close to 4%. Uh, GILT's delivered return of 10.5 close to and the GILT Liquid Fund's delivered return of 6.5 close to 6.5. So a difference of 4% between the two usually means uh, a very neutral direction. I mean, you know, in the past, Whenever such past occurrences have happened, the markets have been ne never given a very clear indication of the future and this is, this is one of those times. So we're a bit uncertain on the direction of gilts because of you know, the past, because of the observations that we have seen in the indices returns. The other thing that we see is what we map carefully is uh, the SIP returns of the gilt indices. I mean, SIP is typically a measure of equity performance indices, but we have tried to do the same thing in the gilt index. And uh, the three year or 36 month SIP, which ended in uh, December 2019, would have given an SIP return of close to eight and a half. And that's a very neutral rate in terms of it's on the higher end of the average, but that kind of says the fact that we are almost close to the peak if you measure SIP returns for the past 20 years. So that's what our observation is. We, the average SIP returns will be close to 7.5, we we're we tracking close to 8.5. So we're actually moving away from the average, which makes the probability of making monies in guilt a bit more difficult if you consider a point-to-point -point return. This is purely based on past estimates that we have calculated. But what we are also looking at something more interesting is something called uh, the spreads between you know double A plus asset and triple A. Let's remember the fact that this time around the last calendar year was a was a year when the triple A outperformed the gills. What we also observed is because of the fall in triple A bond rates, there has not been an equivalent fall in the double A or you know, below rates because of the credit events which have happened in the marketplace. Now the difference between a double A plus asset and a below credit and the triple A assets are today almost trading at historic highs. We feel the fact that there may, there may be an interesting case for rally in double A plus and below ratings because of the fact that we are trading at historical spreads vis-a-vis triple A asset. We believe the fact that a fall in AAA yields is the first step towards normalization of credit markets and the normalization generally has rubs on to a you know, AA plus and lower grade assets and which may you know, start surprising investors. The investor mood currently in the debt market is currently very wary of credits. 
moods generally do not turn out into out outcomes. So we think the fact that the, the risk return trade-off between AA plus and below credits reserve is AAA remains skewed in favor of AA plus and below assets at this moment. To sum it all, based on past events and market movements, we think the fact that credit space will surprise investors. The flows into the debt funds have been predominantly the corporate bond classified schemes which invest predominantly in AAA and AA plus asset and in banking and PSU debt funds. That reflects the mood of the investors. We've also seen a large amount of outflows from credit risk funds that also suggest the mood of the investors. The mood of the investors may not necessarily translate into the outcome for the investors. So our assumption today is the credit risk funds and credit per se would looks at a there looks a very interesting possibilities in the market. Mutual fund investments are subject to market risks. Read all scheme-related documents carefully.